everyone and welcome. It is time for another paint and slate. And as you can see, we have some exciting news already to share with you. Now, just a heads up, Lauren will be joining me soon. We had some audio issues because this is a pre-recording and uh, something happened with Lauren's audio in the first half, was able to fix it. So Lauren will be coming back, but just a heads up, I'm gonna be giving you the rundown of what's happening in the game. We're gonna jump over to a new scene where it's basically, um, you'll hear me speaking every so often so you can see what's happening with Okira and I'll have some fun music playing in the background for you then. And then once we get through that part, Lauren's audio got fixed and she's back and you have your usual paint and slate as it normally goes. Uh, but just like I said before, this is pre-recorded. I am in the chat though. Hi me and hi everyone in the chat. Uh, but before we get started, we have some really cool announcements and we're gonna be starting with Twiggy the Twig Blessing. Now, this is a charity familiar that will be launching next Wednesday. We've been working with Johnny Staten on this one to raise funds for one tree planted for April charity. Now, this is something that I am very excited for you all to check out. So make sure you get Twiggy added to your roster of familiars soon. Uh, because you don't want to miss out on this little cutie pie. So again, heads up, if you want from information on that one, check out the Spotlight blog that should be going live soon, if not already. And you can read more about all of Twiggy and the goodness that is this adorable little twig blessing. Now, along with Twiggy, we also have a new champion that has joined the roster, and that is Antrius from One For All. We've been working with Deerstalker Pictures. Antrius is available in the Greengrass event, which just launched this Wednesday. If you haven't logged into the game yet and unlocked Antrius, why haven't you? This is a bard and a fantastic bard at that, but do make sure you get into the game and check that one out. And you can see as it just went by, we have the witch light Antrius skin with symbols, the monkey familiar in that theme pack. Uh, well worth checking out the Spotlight blog that went out on Antrius as well last Friday. Uh, so go to islechampions.com and get more information on that one too if you haven't already. But wait, there is definitely more. We have a very busy week for you. Don't forget to tune in Monday for the next episode of A Familiar Quest with DM uh, Eugenio Vargas as well as players Megan, Brian, Kelly, and Alicia all playing their wonderful familiars who, by the way, three of them were former charity familiars, so how cool is that? But you know what? I think, is three charity familiars enough? Is that enough? Because, I, no, you know what? I think we need to add a fourth charity familiar. So Johnny is actually gonna be joining the cast as Twiggy, and uh, we'll be playing on Monday with the crew. That Again, that starts at 5 p.m. on Monday here on this very channel, and you'll get to see Johnny in action playing out this cutie pie. And there is a fantastic uh, little story behind Twiggy too. So hopefully you enjoy it and make sure you tune in. And then last but certainly not least, it is the weekend, which means it is another weekend buff coming your way. And this is the Swift and Agile weekend. So make sure you log in, get all the goodies going on with that one. And if you're a part of our newsletter list, that means you also get the free Swift Gold Chest. If you haven't signed up for a newsletter yet, do take advantage of it. We send out a weekly email that has a chess code that co coincides with our weekend buffs. And it's definitely a lot of fun if you haven't taken advantage of that one yet. So that all being said and done, sit tight. We're gonna get started very soon. Uh, again, you'll be hearing some of my audio, some music in the background for this next portion. Uh, but then once all the audio gets figured out and fixed, Lauren will be back with us. Uh, so for now, take care and past me will see you soon while future me is sitting in the chat ready to talk with you bye so, <laughs> that is the whole kitten caboodle which means it is time to jump back into orkira and we are going to be working on getting some colors onto this mini that we basically kit bashed together if you missed the episode from the other week we basically took the blue wormling from liz kids and the dragonborn cleric from liz kids um, this is gonna sound awful. We chopped off the wings, slapped them onto the back of the cleric, and we created Orkira! <laughs> Ta-da! Yeah, it was a fun, if you missed the episode, check it out. It's a great episode on tips for how to get bash and do things safely. But now we're gonna get back into the painting portion of Paint and Slay. Go figure. 
Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some shadow layers established on this because there's some beautiful texture in this miniature that I wanna make sure we're really showcasing off. You can see in the wings, there's this great detail in the shield, um, as well as in the armor and the scarf that we kind of pulled together uh, using tissues, believe it or not, toilet paper. That, that was a thing. Um, so yeah, that's what we're gonna do. And we wanna start off with Stonewall Gray. And we are going to dry brush that across the entire mini. Get that going. And then just as a heads up, this is probably gonna be a three episode mini. So we'll finish Orkira in her ancient Orkira skin form, which I can't wait. But next week we will be doing a little break um, because we're gonna be painting our own little twig blessing, which should be a lot of fun. And I can't wait to do. So just a little heads up on that one because of um, the launch that we have going on with Twiggy. We're gonna take a break and do that instead. You can see just from that, <laughs> look at the detail on that shield. But it's what's cool is we get that folding of the scarf um, created from doing the tissue paper, the toilet paper, whatever kind of, you know, thin paper product you have, just to kind of capture that wrap.
Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much done. So this is where we are at this point. You can see this has brought out the details, so you get some more information as to what it is you will be painting, which again, I find extremely helpful, especially if you're newer to mini painting. Um, the next thing we're gonna do, because as you can see down here, we have a lot of warm, lovely colors that are going on with our Kira. So instead of going into a cooler tone gray, we're gonna shift into using bone white as our next layer for the dry brushing. Um, that's gonna give it a warmer tone underneath so that when we start putting the golds and yellows and reds on top of it, you won't get this jarring factor of a cool tone underneath and a warm tone on top and kind of ending up with a more, um, sort of like olive skin tone syndrome where things kind of get more muted within each other. So that's where you wanna be careful with your layers underneath if you're making sure using warm colors, keep your undertones warm as well. Basically, the sh <laughs> I'm gonna have some fun with the shield because of um, one of the updates to Akira's skin. The um, the thing of, um, what was it, magma? For the fireball, how it looked like the ball of magma instead of the fireball. We're gonna make the shield look like that ball of magma in the spaces in between the lattice work. Um, so this, this whole thing is gonna be like, she's literally gonna be on fire. The base, we're gonna do this really cool um, cracked floor with lava running between the cracks type of look for the base. Um, so this is all warm tones that we're going to be working with. No, that skin has a really fun collection of updates to it, so I was trying to play off as many as possible. This is, so far, I'm still gonna keep going with the bone white. Again, we're putting the warmer tone underneath because we're working with the warm tones on Orkira. Because she is warm. All those cool details. Oh my gosh, all the fire details. All the cool fire details. Yay. So that's gonna be fun, warm especially. in so many ways. 
Oh, between like, you know, the magma crack shield and walking on lava and yeah. all of that goodness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun for sure. It's fun to just lean into that kind of thing. I know fire is one of those elements in D&D that a lot of mm-hmm. uh, a lot of creatures or a lot of PCs get a chance to play with because, you know, fireball is fun. Fireball right. is very fun. But there's something very cathartic in a way about just hardcore leaning into an element like that. Mm-hmm. Even even for a creature like Orkira who is primarily about healing and the fire is secondary, it's it's super yeah. fun. Yeah, but I mean, with fire, you do get elements of healing. At least this is the druid lover to me because, you know, think about mm-hmm. it. We have forest fires. It heals the forest. It can renew itself and start fresh. So um, I'm all for it. I had a I mean, tabaxi we were there druid. And it, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. I had a tabaxi druid circle of wild wildfire. Fi- wild flower no wild fire who um her healing spells um kind of got hot and they would feel like they were burning even though it wasn't kind of like you know how when you do um hydrogen peroxide or rubbing alcohol in like a straight knee it felt like yeah (laughs) it's got that yeah that that yeah Mm -hmm. mm-hmm yeah or cares doesn't hurt but it definitely uh it's it's like it gets sucked into the wound and then it's like a a painless cauterize essentially the Ooh, way that i've that's cool i've described it before um yeah that's i awesome. find it um like i'm i love that you're like yeah and sometimes you have to you know burn down a forest in order to get it you know get it healed and, and bring it back and i distinctly remember when we played uh that one shot where you were voronika mm-hmm. and I think we, between uh, you and me and Gazrik and um, Nahara, all four of us are like, yeah, sometimes you have to burn down, you know, a forest or a town or a whole world. Mm-hmm. And there was this moment where we all just kind of looked at each other. We're like, oh, <laughs> we're the pyros in the group, aren't we? <laughs> oh, okay. All right. We have. That are was sure such we're... a fun group to play. Like, we're all like, how are these characters going to fit together? And they got along famously. <laughs> It was amazing. It was, to be honest, I I knew we were going to get along. The question was, was there going to be any point in the, uh, not butt heads, but where like someone's either aversion to undead or selfishness was going to get Mm -hmm. in the way. But I think we were all as characters so just amused by what was going on. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. And yep. and as much as Voronika is not necessarily a good person, she's not she's not full on evil in my opinion. I mean, she's selfish. She's chaotically evil, exactly. She's selfish, so she's driven by her selfishness. She'll do things that she doesn't think through because she sees the game for herself. She doesn't exactly think about everyone else. But yeah. she'll look at everyone else and see how they can be a personal game for her. She will absolutely do that. So Well, and and she also won't let uh hey we need to stop vecna because the whole world could get destroyed mm-hmm. and hey the world is where i have all my stuff so you know yeah. voronika is the kind of selfish that you can work with you know oh. voronika is an excellent example of if you want to play evil in a in a group full of good people that's how you do it mm-hmm. because as far yeah. as orkira is concerned because of all of our interactions she doesn't think you're a bad person <laughs> she thinks you're <laughs> Because when you think about her interactions is you're the spooky lady who showed up in the shadow fell that helped. That's true. You know, yeah, Desmond true. and Tatiana were a little wary of you, but like yeah. you helped. And then you showed yep. up in Candlekeep and you helped. And right. you were all about, you know, all the jokes we were making about fire. So as far as Orkira mm-hmm. is concerned, you're cool. You just have a spooky I aesthetic. It. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it'd be fun to see Voronika and Miria get together. <laughs> Yeah, I think the two of them would also get along famously. <laughs> yes. I think mm-hmm. we would be careful to get the two of them along. If they get along together, I mean. Um, okay, so this is Orkira with the various layers. We started off yeah, with the like charcoal gray base. Then we moved on to Stonewall Gray, and now we have the bone white all yeah. up in there for funsies. And now we're gonna do a fun little trick with another layer, and we're gonna go to the uh, Banshee White. Banshee. And we're not gonna do all over. Okay. 
Okay. We're actually going to be playing around a little bit with light, light source. It's not a full OSL, you know, uh, with its, a certain source of light direction, but I am going to sort of enhance certain areas that when we put the color on it slightly brighter because of the fact we are going to put a little fireball in this hand uh, in the next episode. We're not going to get to it today, but we're going to put um, a little fireball in there. Quick question. What is OSL? Yes. OSL. It is, oh, I always forget it. It's basically um, one source light. I think is what it stands for. Okay. Or, uh, and it's basically you create an effect like if you're holding a lantern, you make it look like the arm is glowing with the lantern. Light, oh, okay, okay. All um, right. So this is kind of riffing off it a little bit. So what we're going to do with the Banshee White, we're not going to take it all the way around Orkira's um, form like we do with the other two colors. We're basically going to go to the hand itself. And I know it's going to have the flame right here. So I'm going to start pulling the Banshee White up in a very strict direction okay and lighten up the areas that look like would get the light from the fireball so you start from the hand and you pull across start from the hand pull across and wherever the brush doesn't hit that's where the light isn't going to hit all right so, so probably mostly the hand start, mostly maybe the a little hand, bit of the pauldron the and a, yeah Maybe yeah. some of that leg. A little bit of the side of the face. A little bit of the leg. Yep. But the trick is to start at the hand and pull away. And whenever you hit, that's what's going to be picked up. And this will just brighten the colors as we put the glazes on top of the miniature so that visually, as you start to set, you'll kind of get this idea of like, oh, so it was kind of, you know, glowing influence there. Yeah. So this is sort of a little cheat to it. Um, there are other ways to do it. Um, there are painters who do a fantastic job with it. I toy around with it every so often. It's not something I like to do all the time. Um, and this is how I kind of will do it, just to have some fun with it. But you can see it's already starting to give this visual, like something's going on over here in comparison to the rest of the body. Oh, yeah. No, that's definitely. Yeah. That is neat. Is this the first time we've played around with mm -hmm. specific lighting yeah. in a mini? Yes, absolutely. And in fact, yeah, let me go snag it. Hold on. Excuse me, Cotton. S snag away. So I did this technique on this fellow with the glazes. And you can see where it's brighter yellow here. That's where I was doing the white under layers. And it just brightens it up. Very it cool. Like the flame. So that's kind of what we're doing there. That's awesome. Yeah. I like to get visual references when I can. Mm hmm. Hey, and I learned something today. Cool. Now I know what OSR is. OSL. It's always good to learn some of those, those specific. Is that an actual painter term or is that like a more it general is, lighting a, term? No, it's an actual painting technique in miniature painting. Um, Chris Gorka does a fantastic job uh, with lots of different OSL. Um, I think it's Gorka Paints on Instagram. Uh, mm -hmm. It's an account I highly recommend you follow. Uh, he likes to dabble more with um, Marvel and DC forms and figures, but truly does a great job with the source lighting. And um, who else does a nice job with it? Oh, I'll think about it. I'll think about it and mention it next episode. There's a couple of art other artists who do it more frequently than I do, and they just always are so spot on with it and do such a great job. So That's cool. I'll make a mental note of, hey, also check out these accounts if you're kind of intrigued by this concept. I'm just looking where your brush is hitting just to make sure that I'm in the, the same general. Yeah. But basically I'm just pulling across and it's like, okay. Yeah. There we go. I think, I think I'll go a little further down the leg. I think I didn't go yeah. quite as far. Yeah. And then you can try pulling back some, but because the flames can be facing forward more, it's not going to reflect back as much beyond hitting some portion of the wing over here. Yeah, just like the very tip. Yeah, exactly. 
All right. Yeah, I'm, I show it to the camera like it's going to show up. <laughs> yeah, but still. I mean, I can see it. All right, let's 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 try right. the. Oh, nope, nope, not not my camera, <laughs> not my turn. One of these days, I'm gonna get that uh that other someday. camera. Someday. someday. It's my it'll, once it'll a week be, uh, dream of a new camera. <laughs> <laughs> the cameraception. Okay, so that Neat. is the shadow layering stuff that we're gonna be doing in that respect. Mm -hmm. so you can put your dry brush into the water and rinse that off and then we're going to move over to orange fire Ooh. and mm. we're kind of going to build in the reverse of what we just did so you can see how in our kira's wings she has those lovely orange cracks happening so what we're going to do is we're going to go in with orange fire and paint in the fleshy stretched out areas um so the orange goes into those crevices and then we're going to go back in with a gray and dry brush the higher surfaces so it looks more like how our Kira's wings are in the art. Um, Very cool. So start off with orange fire, thin it out a little bit. Okay. Mine always comes out thick. You're going to want to thin it out a little bit and then apply it into the leathery bits of the wings and avoid the bone if you can. Because you can see in the art here that that is more of the golden yellow tone that we'll get on there for our Kira's flesh. So this is almost Sadly, the... there's not no Kira's flesh. <laughs> I mean, it's it's flesh. it's flesh. It's just mm -hmm. you know, it's hide, I guess. Yeah. And so this is, if I'm getting this right, it's almost the opposite of dry brushing because we're going into the recesses. Exactly. Yep. Okay, we're doing cool. the reverse of it. Um. So we have that going for us. Gonna thin this out, like I said. There's a lot. And definitely thinned because with all the texture that's happening in these wings, you want to make sure it rece recedes as best as you possibly can. So I'm actually going to test on my own wrist and it's falling nicely into, see how I have like these little crevices and everything. As soon as I put that paint on, you can't see them. That means it's gone directly into those like I need it to. Okay. So luckily I'm not going anywhere later today. So people will be like, what's up with the arm? <laughs> Also, we said it's it's fairly easy it's to, uh, wash, easy off to paint, wash off, especially the the minutes after we have mm -hmm. we have gone. Yeah, if you catch it soon after the wash part, then it does make a difference. Oh yeah, I've just you know, I've done the thing sometimes where I've been painting into the wee hours of the morning, and mm. I'll wash my hands but forget to like wash up the forearm. And I'll wake up. I'm like, oh, there was more Whoops. of the palette I forgot about. <laughs> Whoopsie. Yeah. Whoopsie. I really got into my paints last night. But you can see this is a beautifully vivid orange. Oh, yeah. Which I am a fan of. And, you know, it, it is an aptly named color. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it was practically begging to get used. Orange fire, hello. Right. I also appreciate, even though, uh, <laughs> even though it, in a, in a way, is so opposite of that, uh, that one of the colors we're going to be using is Tarasque Carapace. I'm like, we're going to be putting some Tarasque on her. Ah, I'm so excited. It's a I know that's not really history what it is. we didn't know about, right? Yeah. I mean, Surprise she has. Uncle. In, Encountered the Tarasque, but it was very briefly, mm -hmm. and uh, she didn't really I do can, much with it. I can honestly say the only Tarasque I have ever really encountered is when Todd played the baby Tarasque in the Dragons for Dinner. Yeah, <laughs> <Sean> we <Rowan> did. <laughs> yep, that was, was my only interaction with a Tarasque that I've ever well, had for Dungeons and Dragons. The real Tarasque did show up at the end, so... That's just it, yeah. But, like, it was, like, the extent... Like, that was the, literally the first Tarasque I have interacted with character-wise. Oh, okay. See, I thought you were also talking about just Todd's character in general. But, yeah. I've, I've um, had a yeah. couple Tarasque... I mean, obviously, I I ran that game. Oh. Right. <laughs> um, mm. I played in a... Um... God, this was years ago. Um... 
I went to a New Year's Eve party with some friends and we we played D&D through the evening. That was mm-hmm. that was the event and we were That's playing uh, James Intercasso's um, Tarask. Uh, I've lost the name of it, but it's like uh, World of Tarasks, Night of the Tarask. It, it's it's oh, it's not coming to mind for me either. It's not coming to mind, but it is essentially it is. Hey, you like Tarasks and you want to have some fun go. with Tarasks yeah. that are not just big bags of hit points um, and some some resistances. Here you go, and it's it's a whole like. It's it's a long one shot, I guess I'd put it. It's mm-hmm. it's like a four, five, six hour game. It kind of depends on uh on a lot yeah. of a lot of the details, but it was super, super fun. Um and that one I played um I played my Aarakocra Rogue from actually uh the demon play game that James Intercasso not only wrote but ran for a stream. Ooh. So so my rogue showed up and it was ridiculous and fun. Uh, awesome. We we fought bunches of oats of Tarasks because it was planet of the Tarask. I love it. Someone in That's someone so in chat. James. It is. It is. It is a hundred percent. It is. It's super fun and it's like serious super fun. It's mm-hmm. it's you know oh yes, the water deep is in trouble and could be destroyed, mm-hmm. but also here's an elemental Tarask. <laughs> Oh Here's gosh, an entire yeah. planet of Tarask. So yeah, there was that. that um, is amazing. Tarask uh, did show up in Heroes of the Plains. So we've brief encounters with the Tarask there, although uh, not as a creature to fight. Let's see, where else? I used the Tarask in a one shot many, many years ago mm. uh, for charity. Uh, it was one of the first interactions I ever had with with the absolutely amazing Gabe Hicks, who was playing in that game, who that was the, not only the first time I got a chance to play with him, but also when I very quickly realized that he is a chaos monkey and will uh-huh. do, uh, especially in a charity game, whatever sounds like the most chaotic thing or the most ridiculous thing to do, they will do it. And I was here for it. And that included in my game, uh, getting eaten intentionally. So that was fun because I, I gave them a couple of op- opportunities to not get eaten. Uh-huh. And they're like, nope, uh-huh. I'm going into this mouth. I'm in. I'm, I'm yep. Yeah. Into the so, belly of the beast. Uh, literally. <laughs> <laughs> so that was amazing and fun. And I have been a fan of his ever since. Oh, yeah. That was many, was great many for years the outside the box plays. And it's just wonderful to watch them in action. Oh yeah. Well, and it, I had set them up with a ridiculous premise anyway, so cuz you know, with one sure. shots. Yeah, it's unless you're doing something. Way. Yeah, unless you're doing something really specific, just mm-hmm. going for oh, yeah. silly is always fun. Yeah. Super silly us. Mhm. And as long as you're going I, I feel like the Tarask is better used in those situations not as something to fight but as something like a part of the scenery or mm-hmm. um you know like a, a an an obstacle that isn't to fight but to deal with because right it's just such a weird creature yeah they are unique yep all right so i got the wings pinted in i've got one done i'm working on the second right now that's totally okay I'm actually going to look at my notes because this is where we get into the fun back and forth. So I have to look at my notes and decide which section to do while I wait for the other section to dry. Mm. Do, 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 do. That's okay. I've been going slow with this. So oh, we can do that. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll out. Yeah, we definitely want to make sure these wings are super dry before we even go in and try and do any additional dry brushing over um, with the darker gray because we don't want that orange and gray to mix. It'll just muddy it up and become this very bizarre brown. Yeah. So I think what we'll do is once you're ready, we will jump over to the upper legs. Oh my God. Yeah. One more side of one wing to go. So okay. I'm almost yeah. there. No rush. No rush at so, all. 
pretty happy with how it's how it's going so far. So nice. And I just got to get that's the bag. Thing. Of this one week. <laughs> and that's going to be that's going to be the hard one. Mm-hmm. Oh, but that is looking fun. Yeah, you can see this one side as it's starting to dry. I like it. Yeah, yeah. definitely as it dries, you can see more about how it's seeping yeah. into the cracks. Exactly. It's very cool. Exactly. That's what we want. And then what we're going to do, because obviously in the art here, or Kira's pants are more fabric based, but obviously on the miniature, it's more armored based. So what I'm gonna do is make the armor a darker gray armor to mm -hmm. nod to what's going on with Orkira's art, even though we can't really have the mini in, you know, fabric pantaloons. <laughs> ah, so, you know, concessions must be made. Yeah, slight adjustments. Yeah. Slight adjustments, but it'll still be good. I know several people who have uh, 3D printers, and one of these days mm. I will just uh, come Must over be. with money and coffee and and get uh, <laughs> an updated Orkira mini. Uh, there you go. Printed and painted. Ta-da! Printed. And there we go. Painted. Wings. Wings Sweet. are. Uh, wings are gonna be hard to show off in my light, but oh, there you go. You can kind of see. There you go. Yeah, get a little taste of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take black and illithid skin and mix together. I know, I know. We're going to mix together this um, grayish purple tone, which I will swatch as soon as I get it mixed together for you. So you can see the color I'm going for. Okay. Yeah, and the... I mean, once again, we're not going for exactly what's in the art for obvious reasons, but even right. this art, the, the, the pantaloons are much darker. Mm-hmm. Ooh. My elephant My skin illith just got really eager. Okay, did yours do this? Okay, just, like, mine did the it out of the bottle? It's like, like super... I beg your pardon? It's really thick, too. Like, it's chunky thick. What the this, hell? This chunky thick shouldn't be chunky thick. Yeah, mine just decided it literally was like a geyser. I'm like, um, that's more than I anticipated. Thank you very much. Let me get a yeah, paper towel. Same for me. Apparently, if Illithid skin is just... Back on, don't, don't put yeah. your cap back on if your paint does that, because if you close that with that paint, guess what you've just created? A very nice connection point. And have fun trying to get the two apart. <laughs> good. Yeah, good, good note. I'm going to also wipe off your nozzle if that happens. I yeah. Mean, oh, well. Well, this is going to be interesting. I might have to add more black. We shall see. We shall see. Yeah. yeah. Do we also want to thin this down because it's so thick? If if you are extra extra thick, um, then yes, I would okay. absolutely thin it down. Oh, I am gonna need to add more black. I'm gonna add well, a little bit of water. Well, well, we're just gonna have a lot of illithid purple stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. What it's else fine. can I paint sort of gray? Hello, little miss. No, you stay right there. I've already had enough adventure. Rora? Kitty? I'm saying no. Yes, you're cute, but I'm saying no. Thank you. All right, so <laughs> we're aiming for more of a gray than a purple. Yes, it's going to be okay. more like this. Oh, okay. All right. I think yeah. I'm pretty much... I think I'm there. Cool. And then I am going to thin it out now that I have the right color mixed. Good lord. Yeah, mine is both the black and the... Interesting, we both had the illithid skin just go, hello, I am here. That seems Deal to be the me. way it is with some colors of paint, right? Yeah. Like, Yeah. All right, I did thin it out so you can see it's not quite as intense as the original mix. So this I'm going to start painting onto the armored area. The pants. So basically the pants and the legs uh, to the kneecap. Leave this section of the legs, like the shin and the feet, leave that alone. Because that's what we're going to do, like that cool wrap look that we have going on. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you also don't want to paint the belt. 
No painting of the belt. No belt. Okay. So right now I'm just doing a very thin coat. And the sash is going to be red, so paint around that sash that's dangling there. That gets left alone. Are we including the kneecaps? Yes. The kneecaps okay. will get this gray. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. I love the way that uh, Kat drew those wraps. Uh, they're awesome. I guess they're they're technically part of the pantaloons. I don't mm. remember what that thing is specifically called, but that uh, that tied up part on the bottom. Right. I love the detail in those. Yeah. How high up are you going? All the way up to the belt. Okay. No, that's, don't do that, don't do that. Pardon me, Arkira, I need to paint between your legs. So it's fine. I, I understand. <laughs> it's for the sake Listen, of art. I'm a medical doctor. There's nothing you could you even do that's going to embarrass me. It's fine. I've seen it all. Mm-hmm. Oh, Lord. God, that was funny. The number of times that Orkira has had to mention, I did, I'm a doctor, it's fine. Like, every once in a while, I uh -huh. feel like um, Sylvester McCoy from the original Star Trek. Yes. Like, yes. I'm a doctor, not a... Hmm. Blank, yep. Not a not an insert something else here, but but like that yep. whole idea of, it's fine, I'm a doctor. I'm not uh -huh. I'm here to heal you, not do anything weird. Just Just come oh. over here. Oh, God, that's funny. Well, especially when you hang out with Briv, who has no uh, filter, who has, has no filter on anything. It's fun to watch everybody else in the party be like, I don't, what? <gasps> and Orkira be like, yeah, okay. <laughs> that sounds like a healthy relationship, sure. Yep. Uh-huh. And we're also going to do that armor plating that's on the back of the tail with this. The, the big chunky bits? Yes, but not, okay. there's a little bit of fabric underneath as like a strap. Don't paint that. That's okay. actually going to match the wrap. Can do. Awesome. Okay. I'm actually very happy with how this purple turned out, or this dark gray purple-ish, yeah. yeah. whatever we want to call it. Mm-hmm. Mine ended up maybe a slightly more purple than yours, but I'm okay with that. Okay. That'll oh, work. Why does the shield worry. have to be in the way of my kneecap? Yeah. Ah. That shield definitely likes to um, block certain yeah. angles. It's, it's like it's being an effective shield. <laughs> <laughs> and then once you get the legs done, you can actually take this same and apply it to the claws if you want on the feet okay so i say that now and i'm like yeah we might have to go back and touch this up after we do the base but still okay that's the bit of the tail i think i got all around the legs Okay, by claws, you literally mean toe claws? Yep, the toe claws. Okay. Toe claws. Toe claws. All right, great. And then, since this is armor, we're going to want, want gunmetal, and we're going to dry brush that over like the edges and everything to give it that metally glint. Okay. The metallic glint, I should say. Metally glint. Just making one more look here to make sure I didn't miss oh, anything yeah. before I, I stop. Whatever you need to do. Totally cool. It is gunmetal. Yes, it is gunmetal. See? Gunmetal. Okay. Gunmetal, where did you? Yeah. There you are. Okay. So I'm still proud of the fact that I put all of my paints in alphabetical order. 
which made it very easy nice. to grab Excellent. them all. Now the next step in my being organized thing is when I pull them out and put them over here to use, I need to remember to put them on my desk in alphabetical order. <laughs> so that oh, it is, yeah. when you say go for gunmetal, I'm not going and just looking. For what now? Yeah. You said this is a dry brush over all the armor or the, the purple all the stuff armor. that we just... Okay. Yeah, the armor that we... Well, the purple that we just painted on that area. Okay. So on the legs and the sh and the caps and the armor plate on the back of the tail. Okay. I might have to use a smaller dry brush, but let's see. Do, do. I love this gunmetal color. It's so... It's a great one. Yeah. It's it's just got such a cool shine to it. Yeah. Plus, I like the fact it doesn't give everything like that shiny brand new metal look. Yeah. It, it tones everything it's down. It's worn a shiny metal. It yeah. is... Dum. Okay, so that is it for the gunmetal for now at least. And the upper legs. And I just gotta take, take care, care of the tail and I'll be with you. All right, and you still have that, I think we're good now. Yeah, you still have that gray that we created, right? Oh yes, I have awesome. plenty. Plenty. Then I think we're going to adapt a little bit and use that gray as a light dry brushing over the wings where we just put the orange. Okay. Make use of that. And I think I'm going to go in with, instead of a flat brush, I'm going to use the multi-purpose, purpose? The multi-purpose brush. And use that on its side to drag across the texture. Ah, okay. Yeah. I got that one. Let me grab that. So the, the multi-purpose and that was the number one? Yeah. Cool. Because yeah, and I still have plenty of this kind of purple gray. Literally just want to float it across the top to catch those upper ridges and not fall too much into where we have the orange. Hmm. So it's better to go light with coating and built up as opposed to being too heavy handed. And I'm honestly, I'm thinning out the paint on my brush on my hand as opposed to a paper towel because I find with the round brushes, when you pull the paint off on your hand, you're not disturbing the bristles as much. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. Is it messy? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, once but again, it's effective. That's what soap and water and later are for. Exactly. There we go. So you can see the difference there. So here we have the ridges getting the gray here and the ridges without the gray on that section right there. Yeah. It's actually good that I just looked up because I, I think I need to go a little darker. Yeah. Oh, we've we've reached the, the calm, really, yeah, quiet exactly. portion. Yeah, it's okay. Well, it that makes is sense considering. Yeah, that's half the fun. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I like that. Look at that's beautiful. Yeah, that's lovely. All right, now to do that on three more sections. Mm-hmm. I do that pretty much everywhere else. I do really like these wings. Like the They're detail. Fun on these wings is really impressive and yeah and especially for for dragon type wings in general i mm -hmm. really appreciate uh ridges and holes and worn bits because it's mm. a lot of the the art that i see or some of the the minis even they're just like 
they're they're almost bat smooth Flat. or yeah. you know it's it's almost like uh demon and devil wings and where they're yep. they're kind of I don't know I just I like seeing the wear and tear I like seeing the uh oh I'm all oh yeah I completely follow what you're saying and I agree yeah and it's these great wings when the wings have a story in their sculpture oh yeah and all the detail in the uh fleshy bits in between mm -hmm. the ridges absolutely is making me super happy good Oh, there we go. But it's giving that lovely sort of molten kind of quality to the wings. Yeah. Oh. Which I am here for. Almost dipped my brush in the gunmetal instead of in the, in Ooh, the gray. The, the purple shiny gray. wings. That would have been a different type of work era. <laughs> right? If that's... We're going to have the Marvel crossover and it'll be uh, Orkira and Angel. <laughs> there you go. This is this is the Warforged version of Orkira. <laughs> Orkira inspired a Warforge build. <laughs> you know, that is a fun concept, though. Taking a Warforged and having the shape of the Warforged look more like another type, you know? Yeah. Like that's a neat concept, I think. Well, if you go with the idea that we create things in our own image, mm -hmm. uh, just in general, and the idea of, okay, humans would create a humanoid-ish type robot. Right. Um, I mean, I think auto gnomes make a lot of sense because gnomes wouldn't make a human-looking right. robot. They'd make a right. gnome-looking robot. So yeah, yeah, if you've got a dragonborn making a warforged, why wouldn't they look like a mm -hmm. dragonborn warforged? Probably not with the wings and the tail and the spikes and everything, but you know what I mean. But still, yeah. Concept is definitely there. Yeah. And when you are a created being like that, once you have sentience, mm -hmm. uh, there's something about the one of the artificer subclasses talks about, I think it's the armorer where you can readjust how you look and what's attached to you. Mm -hmm. um, and I've always liked that idea is like, all right, if I'm playing a Warforged, you know, people can heal themselves. Why can't I adjust how I look, you know? Yeah. I want my arms to be longer. Well, I'll go to an, an armor and be like, help. Rearm my <laughs> armor. I think that's one of the cool things about being a Warforged is like your, oh, yeah. your body can be more adaptable. Or more unique. Mm -hmm. Which is a concept that Orc Hero would, would be very concerned with, but she's had different experiences with her body getting modified without her permission. So. True. Very much the truth there for Akira, absolutely. Okay, so here yeah. we go. You can see how these wings have gone from yeah. bright and fiery yeah. to more of like this uh, smoldering. That's the word I want. Smoldering wings. There we go. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Me too. Woohoo. Sorry, I'm so sniffly. I should blow my nose. No, it's okay. It's allergy season. You can hear my voice is getting gravelly because the tree outside my window is starting to do it. It's like, hey, everybody, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing okay. It's just the looking down. Uh -huh. the, the looking down is is prompting my nose to to be more sniffly than it should be. Right. That's fair. Okay, so now we're gonna take gold yellow and bone white, and we're gonna mix pretty much work here a skin tone. Okay. That's what we're shooting for. Gold yellow and bone white. Banshee S Stonewall. Where where'd my bone white go? You did just use there it for the layering. Is it on yeah. your desk? Yep, I got it. There we go. I'm also cheating a little bit and making more space up in my little impromptu palette. <laughs> I'm peeling up I the dried paint. I don't know if that's cheating. I think that's just smart. <laughs> I do it all the time. I'm like, oh, let me just pull up this bit of plastic. So I'm going to put um, equal amounts next to each other of the gold yellow and the bone white and introduce them in the middle to kind okay. of blend into the color I want for Orkira's skin. 
And then once we get that, I'll thin it out with some water so that we can um, get it to go on top of the skin in a thin layer. Okay, so the interesting thing will be how, how picky am I about to get with Orkira's skin tone? Let's see. And that's absolutely your call. Okay, so it looks like the orange is playing strongly against the mm. bone white. So you're going to want more bone white than of orange. That oh, is for okay. sure. Okay. That's why I said do equal parts next to each other to see who's going to be the contender in the overpower color. And it's definitely the gold yellow is. It's interesting because I'd started putting some of the bone white into the yellow thinking it was going to be the other way around, mm -hmm. but... No, nope, but... the yellow definitely overpowered. I mean, I'm not mad about it because I was able to quickly adjust, but that's why yeah. sometimes it's better to start side by side as opposed to right on top of each other. Yeah. And a little bit of water. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's the color I ended up with. It's almost like yeah. a... um. Like a mayonnaise-based honey mustard? Am I making sense with that food reference? No, actually, that that totally makes sense. Like a a paler, um, yeah, definitely a paler mustard. Yeah, it's like when they make it more of like a dressing as opposed to the honey mustard itself. Yeah. And I think part of that is because she's matte, not shiny. Yeah. And the, I know... At least in my opinion, a matte color is slightly different than a shiny color, even if it's the exact same. Mm -hmm. And and especially with uh, this skin, how much fire there is around that is more shiny. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, so I just thinned that out. And then I'm going to apply with a small detail brush because we're going to put this onto um, the wings facing here. Oh, not the wings, the bones. That's what I want. We're going to apply that to the bony areas here on the wings. Okay. It'll go onto her head as well. And then into any bits of the arm where you see skin. Mm -hmm. And then on the uh, feet, it'll also go onto the feet where there isn't the wraps. So like the upper portion of the toes. And obviously the hands, the one behind the shield and also uh, the one that's going to be holding the fireball. And the tail. Did you say the tail? You might have said the, the tail. The tail and the tail. And the tail. I'm like, did I get all the body parts? Nope. And the tail. <laughs> and the tail. And the all right. tail. Don't I guess I'm going to start the with the tail. head. Give the wings the uh, an extra moment or two to dry. That's fair. I think I might also have an easier time figuring out, am I happy with this color if I just go right for the head? <laughs> it's like, go for the eyes, boo. Go for the head, Okira. Go for the go for the head, Lauren. Go for the head. I think I'm actually gonna add a little bit more of the bone white. Okay. It's very, very close. I mean, very, very close is good. Yeah. Do 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 do. Mix, 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 mix. All right. Let's see. Let's look at that. A little bit more water on my end. Okay. And. Ah! <laughs> you okay? So I was using the paper towel to do a little bit of, of blotting because I had taken some of the yellow off the head. And uh -huh. uh, as Orkira is is wont to do, one of her wings got caught on oh, <laughs> the oh. paper towel. I was like, ah, ah, ah. Oh, everything's shoot. fine. But like that is that is very much. Yep. All right. That, that's Orkira right there. Oh. We love Orkira, dog. We we do. I I love her as awkward and wonderful as she is. But that's that's like half the fun is uh her awkwardness. Like yeah, she she has wings and that gives her a lot of mobility and a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Um and, and a lot of options as well, but you know, it's also fun right. to show the downsides. Like, oh yeah. Right. 
Awkward. I'm like, oh, there's things that get caught on stuff. Yep. Uh huh. Also, when when all of the adjustments happened, because it was it was over multiple seasons, really. Mm -hmm. uh, Todd and I had several discussions about like how mechanically things changed, and one of my favorite things mechanically that doesn't come up too often uh because she's got a ridiculous fly speed because he was basing the fly speed off of aracocra at the time which were 50 feet oh okay so she's got 50 feet of flying speed but because she's awkward and disproportionate her walking speed went down to 25. so every once in a while when she has to walk she's slower uh -huh. than everybody and i love that it's little it's cool it's one of those, like, it's a mechanical detail that feeds into uh, a character detail that uh -huh. is so cool. That is neat. And when it comes up, people are always surprised. Like, why is she slow? <laughs> well, she's dragging along a lot of extra stuff. Right. There's going to be... There's going to be concessions made, you know, birds mm -hmm. are very fast in the air and then you get them on the ground right. and they're like. <laughs> yeah, they kind of hop along more than anything else. Yep. Also, if you're hearing this banging sound coming through my microphone, my neighbor's little one is over and I think playing with garden pots. <laughs> I don't hear anything if it helps. Okay. Okay. I'm, he I'm, I'm hearing this constant dunk, 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 Yep, pink blue skin. Welp. <laughs> like, yeah. Kids are having fun outside. Exactly. I mean, it's a gorgeous day for it, and a lot of the schools have spring break right now, so get that oh, yeah. fresh air, kids. Seriously. I've just totally lost track. I used to be much more aware of school um, schedules, because I mm -hmm. used to do a lot more private lesson teaching for oboes. Um, oh, that's fair. And so I was yeah. much more aware of like when mm -hmm. kids were on break and when exams were happening and all that kind of stuff. And between not really offering private lessons anymore and moving several states. Uh, will, yep. Yeah. That I've will come just, into play for sure. I, I've just totally lost track of when stuff happens. Especially spring break which depending on where you are some spring breaks are dependent on when easter is and some are mm -hmm. not and yep it's always a little bit of a oh wait where am i what am i doing what what yeah. state is this am i in oh it's absolutely a thing um even having two different schools to deal with slightly different uh vacation schedules Mm -hmm. so there are times i'm like i could have sworn this one had off but apparently not but this one does oof so you're like <laughs> juggling yeah, yeah you figure juggle. at least the the districts that are close by would coordinate but no no oh god no that would re know. that would require coordination and cooperation <laughs> this is speaking now, as a former teacher oh yeah districts get competitive with each other unnecessarily i might add yeah now sometimes that is to uh kids benefits say mm. uh when school districts decide that they're going to take their um they're going to celebrate halloween because mm -hmm. sometimes a town will decide to celebrate halloween on a different weekend right. than some other towns and then yep. then you get like two weekends worth of halloween yeah 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 mm -hmm. And you get that lovely little double dipping syndrome. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, I loved it when that happened when I was a kid. I mean, who wouldn't? Come on, it's uh, more candy. Well, and I definitely had enough friends in other uh friends from my school, but in high school were in a different enough district that mm -hmm. could be like, all right, this weekend we're gonna go to your house. This weekend we're gonna go to my house. Okay. Yep. Just plan out some routes, and it was fun. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> and we're we're definitely gonna go to uh, this area where all the football players live because they're they're all gonna give out full size candy bars. Mm hmm. 
because Buffalo Bills are awesome. There, I said it. They may not be an awesome sports team, but uh, in general, they're awesome people. Personality-wise, <laughs> that's a good thing to hear, though. Oh, yeah. Jim Kelly is a is a staple in the community, not just because he was a, a, a football player for many, many years, but he just... Yeah, my brain just went Jim Carrey when you said that. And I'm like, he played football? That's literally what my (laughs) internal monologue was. (laughs) That's that's a different type of football team? Mm -hmm. Uh, The one that Jim Carrey was on? Yeah, Jim Kelly. Uh, Jim Kelly, yes. That makes makes far more sense. Although now I I, kind of want a football movie starring Jim Carrey. He has done. (laughs) He's done Waterboy. Mm Mm-hmm. Right? No, yeah. no, no, that was Adam Sandler. That was Adam Sandler. Um, oh, yeah, you're right. No, it was... Um... Oh, Pet Detective. Oh, Ace Ventura. God. Remember there was that whole football theme that was running through it? Oh, God. It's been... It's been forever in a day. It's been a long time. I've seen that movie. Same. I'm just thinking of like um, the meme everyone shares where he's like dancing in the tutu. Because that whole oh, dancing in the tutu yeah. is because he spiked a football. I'll let the facility wow. type the thing. You're absolutely right. I can picture the meme, uh-huh. but I totally, and I knew it was Ace Ventura Pet Detective, but I have no idea. I'd totally forgotten what the context was. Holy yep. cow. That's amazing. That's about all I remember of it. I will tell you that right now. Well, that movie came out in the the 90s? Yeah, it did. And I haven't seen it since. I'm pretty sure that's that's a movie that we Uh, saw in the theater. Never watched again. And there, there are a lot of movies from the 80s and 90s that I have vaguely fond memories of. That Mm -hmm. I also am just never going to watch again for a variety of reasons. Oh, totally fair. Yeah. Some things just don't age well. Mm-hmm. It is absolutely a thing. Ooh, I'm liking the way this is looking. Yeah, me too. I think I think Ooh. my yellow might still be a little bit uh, brighter than yours, but I'm loving how both of these look. So oh, nice. I'm happy. Oh, good. Happy. It's still a matte yellow, so I'm happy. Cool. Or I guess gold, I should say. Yeah. Honey mustard gold. Yeah. Yeah, there are definitely, uh, there are movies that I have no idea how they aged. And I'm like, mm-hmm. you know what? I have no interest in watching this again and finding out. I'm just going to mm-hmm. keep my relatively fond oh, memories. Fair. Yeah. Completely fair. I got too much current stuff to catch up on anyway. I am two episodes behind on The Mandalorian. Uh, I need to just watch that full stop. I haven't even gotten into it again. Both seasons or just the- other stuff? The most recent season. Uh, The most recent season. Like, I watched it. I watched the first season. I watched... How many seasons in are we now with The Mandalorian? Three? Two? I think three. So it's it's the most recent one I have to catch up on. So, season three. Yeah, because two was that weird season. Good season, but weird season that had... um, Right. Right. Where it almost felt more... Yes, it felt more like a Boba (laughs) Fett feature. Yeah. Yes. I did see that one. Okay. Yeah, I am, at this point of recording, two episodes behind. I, I managed to catch up a little bit from when I, the last couple of weeks have been very busy in in good but mm. weird ways for me. And so it has been hard for me to keep up with some media like that. And yeah. I gave, That's fair. Uh, my husband has blanket permission to watch things um without me in those cases mm-hmm. because he has a harder time avoiding spoilers than i do and i think like he just ends up with stuff on either his uh youtube or his tiktok feed and where the oh, title fair. is just a giant spoiler yeah. yeah which is oh i hate that so much uh, but i i don't have that happen nearly as much i guess i'm lucky that way That's so good. yeah definitely okay so i'm gonna go back to that little bit of gold lolo gold fellow gold yellow and you see how the talons in the artwork are almost more of like a glowing orange gonna take that gold yellow and just with a dry brush 
feather it onto the tips of the talons and the bottom part of the wings, just lightly. I'm still working on the the spiny bits, but I Something will like be that. there shortly. I've got one wing done, and I'm one wing done. Just, one wing, one winged dragonborn angel. I've got one done. Ta-da! Getting in between the wings, which is always the fun. Fun. Uh huh. It's okay. It's details. Exactly. And again, there's no rush on it. Yeah. I mean, the skin just came out. We have plenty of time. Exactly. And like I said, if we have to break, if since we're going to be breaking anyway, so that we can mm -hmm. be timely for um, our twig blessing. Um, yeah, it's all good. Yeah. There's something nice about taking our time with a tiny, I shouldn't say tiny, with a smaller mini, like... Yeah, with a standard min medium, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we we took a while with um the, the Young Green Dragon, but that was a fairly large that mini. That was a good size, yeah. And so it's kind of nice to... To go slow with a mini that we're going slow because it's just got lots of detail. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That is a severe... Mm hmm The The point where the wings attach to the body, and I'm not talking about the oh. um the part that we did, I mean, mm -hmm. the actual where the wings are are curving down and then they they have a an elbow, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Like it's a cool bit, but it's also I, did, I didn't realize mm -hmm. how severe that chunk was. Yeah. OK, I'm going to leave it at that for the little extra gold yellow. <laughs> Hmm. Just checking my notes again. Where are we oh, going yeah. with that step? That's all right. I am still yeah. working on this wing. Sometimes I put in notes where it say, if this didn't quite work as expected, do this part then. And oh. it came out as expected. So I was able to cross something off because we don't need to do it. Nice. Yeah, I like it when that happens. Oh, but look at these wings. I'm really happy with that. Yeah. That's I fun. Am almost there but yeah i am also very happy with how these are working nice. out very nice yeah that little tipping with the gold yellow at the talon part it just gives it a little bit more of a glowing visual interest for those wings it's definitely a step worth taking well, i'll be there shortly <laughs> oh yeah yeah no pressure i'm just i'm literally just kind of looking things over like okay we got that we got that oh yeah um yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're coming. We're coming up on the end of time anyway. So yes, I'm, we're getting close mm -hmm. to that half hour mark. Yeah, I'm so more than happy to finishing up the wings. That basically takes care of the wings. Then let's see here. So we need to finish up. Let me see what we need to do. We need to take some uh, stonewall gray for her horns. Oh yeah. And then do a little bit of bone white on the face, especially, just to kind of help pop that out a little bit more. So I'm trying to see, you can see the horns. The horns are smaller. They're obviously not the full scale that Orkira has in the artwork. We're going to work with what we have. So we find oh, yeah. This, this dragonborn that we grabbed isn't uh, thousands exactly. of years old. So Right, right. Her horns are She's still growing still... into her horns. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh no. Let's see. I think I think I think I think. I think I can. I think I think we're there. 
There you go. Yeah. For whatever reason, when I hold this mini upside down, the lighting is much better to show things off. So. I think because it's not translating the base cap as much. When you hold it upside down, it reduces the surface of what the ah. light is. I think you're right. Yeah. I'm just doing a, a second oh, yeah. once over to look for spots I might have missed because I was I've been going slow enough to try to really not get any of the mm. gold inside of the the skin parts of the wings. Fair. But it does yeah. mean every so often I'm like, oh wait, there's a spot. Mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot of this I'm, when we put a wash over it, I'm not gonna have to worry quite so much about like yeah. tiny, tiny little bits, but exactly exactly i am gonna grab a little detail brush though because we're gonna need that for those little bitty horns the bitty bitty horns yeah i wonder do i have a i might want to get a smaller detail brush for those if you horns can, i would recommend it yeah let's see what i can find and then i'm going to just this one is small but i think i can go smaller i think i can i think i can yeah, here we go. You are. Oh, man, these are wee little horns. I'm actually going to cheat a little bit and kind of use the side of the head. I mean, I don't Just think it's cheating. Uh, what color were we using? You said stonewall, stonewall gray. Wall. Okay. Yep, stonewall gray. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, that kind of gives it a more more presence of a horn than before. Yeah. Show. I mean, when there's fire on top of them, they'll be very prominent. <laughs> yeah. But for now, to capture the idea of the horn... Just gonna do that. Ah, you're even going down the brow a little bit. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just to kind of get that to pop out a little bit more. I mean, this mini does have have quite the impressive brow ridges. So. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. There we go. I don't even think I'm going to do the bone white because I'm worried it's going to hide it again. So I'm going to leave it just at the stonewall gray for the horns. Okay. Because these are so small. Um, but. <laughs> Feeling brave enough to do her eyes? Sure. Let's do this. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Why not? Okay. What did I decide? These to eyes might be small enough that I'm not even going to want to get a toothpick. I might really have to go for a brush. All right, so we want polished gold polished for this. Gold. That's glorious. Polished gold, gold or glorious gold, one of the two. Uh, I have both. So which? I'm going to go with polished because it's very bright. Okay. So it kind of adds more to the glowing effect. However, it is very much in need of a good shaking. Needs yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this one is a very ASMR satisfying. Yes. <laughs> Shake it up. Shake it up. Oh, there we go. Not sure that's way too much, but that's okay. I, I didn't even really. I just... Yeah, I didn't even really um, squeeze. I just like turned it over and a little bit came out. I'm like, that's more than enough. That's exactly what I'm doing right now. I'm like, I'm just going to use what popped out of the nozzle. There you go. And then... Okay. Everybody in chat, please, please hold while we poke at some eyes. So where are her eyes? Oh, there they are. Yeah. Okay.
Okay. okay. All right. Two glowing eyes. Think so. Man, it's interesting. They they don't show up all the time except in very specific light. Yep. I just picked. Shoot. Quick repair. All right. Think. Okay, so my gold got a little, got a little, little yeah. So what I'm going to do is I still have some of the yellow left that we mixed ahead of time. Yeah. For the skin. So I'm going to go back to that yellow and correct a little bit yeah, by going over that brow or the cheekbone ridge, I guess is what it, you can call it. <laughs> back a little bit. There we go. There we go. Okay. All right. I had that moment where I'm like, I kind of want to do more, but then also I think if I do any more, I'm just going to be going back and forth with gold and yellow and gold and yellow and gold and yeah, yellow. Yeah, that's definitely fair. Okay. Okay. I'm going to call it a call it quits while I'm ahead type of thing. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. The eyeball. For the eyeball. Okay, let's see what we can start working on because we still have about 15 minutes left. Yeah. What do you say we start getting the scarf going? Yeah. That's sash, I should say. So that's because that's straight up scarlet red. So anywhere we need to stop is actually, that's a good one because then we don't have to worry about mixing. Makes so sense to me. Scarlet red, and that's going to go all over the scarf. And this is thinned out, mind you, to a nice glaze. So it's going to go on the scarf and it's go on, going to go on the sash. Just make sure you're avoiding that belt around her waist. All right. FYI. Oof, that is a, that's a nice color. It's a beautiful red. That is a really nice color. Yeah. Oh, and I got to water this down a little bit. Yeah, mine's a little too thick, so. All righty. All right, so the whole scarf and then the dangly bit between her legs. Exactly. Yep. Okay. The drapey bit. All right, here we go. Yeah, even though uh, the quote unquote original art is all in blues and whites, I'm really liking this red. Yeah. And now the question is, can I get it on around her neck without getting it on her face? Oh dear. I mean, I know she's got scars and things, but I, which I probably shouldn't just yeah. paint her head red that let's see how gentle i can be okay there we go so i have a non-spoily question about the D, D movie for you oh okay go for it what did you think of their depiction of dragonborns i was surprised okay i liked them I, I very mm -hmm. much appreciate that both Dragonborn and the Tabaxi and the Aarakocra were practical effects. Mm -hmm. um, I, I enjoyed that a lot. I thought it helped with the realism of those creatures. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. I was surprised at how small they were. Okay. Interesting. Which is a, which might, like, I don't think that's a, I'm not saying that as a criticism. No. But that was a, a surprise when um, there's a moment in where there's a paladin who walks up to a dragonborn and has an interaction. And yes, the dragonborn is is seated, but it is still very obvious that they are 
uh, they're like human sized. Right. And, and the other one that is in the movie that I remember distinctly is also like human sized. Yeah. And I've always thought that they're, they're bigger. Now that might've just been how it needed to be done so that it looked good on film. Um, Mm -hmm. There certainly isn't. Yeah, I don't think this is a spoiler. There isn't a prominent dragonborn in the movie, so it's not like this is a a creature that needed to be on camera for a very long time. Mm-hmm. So that that might have been uh that might have been part of the choice, but yeah, I was I I liked how they looked in general. I just thought that they were a little small. Okay, especially cool. next to yeah. the Aarakocra. And maybe that's just because of what they had to do with the Aarakocra. Maybe, because yeah. Because Jarnathan needed to do things. And once again, I have no problem no with what they did in the movie. Right. Um, you know, it's one of those like, yes, okay, technically Aarakocra are supposed to be small uh, on the, the four to five foot side. And, and Dragonborn are supposed to be larger on the uh, right. six to seven foot side. And you know what? That's I have zero problem with that being changed for movie purposes, partially because you only see a couple of those creatures and partially because, all right, maybe we're just seeing small dragon born in a big Aarakocra. Ah. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I, I think if if I had to, I liked the dragon born a lot. I wish there were more. I wish they were bigger. I wish they had a bigger presence in the movie. Mm-hmm. How about you? I... I, I I was kind of like it wasn't quite the proportions I was anticipating when I oh saw interesting them. okay yeah yeah again like I kind of felt like I almost wanted to shrink the size of the heads down and make the forms like the body elongated like taller um, okay it's sort of I was like well that's not quite how I had been envisioning envisioning dragonborns in my head I guess mm-hmm. um. So yeah, I was just curious what your your thoughts on it were having, you know, played a dragonborn as well. So I I mean the other thing to, that I think we both are acknowledging here is that they're not in the movie very much and so it's right. it's hard to see a lot of detail. And I've only seen the movie yeah. the once. So who knows? Same. Maybe once it comes out on on streaming and I can go back and and watch again mm-hmm. um you know, maybe I'll have a different opinion. But yeah, that was. I was happy that they were in. The... First off, I was happy they were oh, in the movie at all, see. because I remember yeah. when that first trailer came out and I'm like, everyone's a human. Why is everyone yeah. a human? What is going yeah. on? There's not even dwarves. What is going on? And so. And the fact that they even went for like tabaxi in some of the really, really uh, out there races like that, yeah. I appreciated a lot considering yeah, this was... is. It was what? It was great to see overall. Yeah. It was just interesting how what my mind had been interpreting mm-hmm. picked up on things. It's like, oh, but wait. And it's like, oh, okay. Interesting. It was more like, you know, just curious to see what other people thought. Because it kind of gives you a taste of how people sort of theater of the, theater of the mind, how they're seeing things during their play, which fascinates mm-hmm. me. So, Well, and especially with uh creatures like some of the more fantastical creatures like dragonborn like aarakocra like mm-hmm. uh uh you know any of those that have been in D long enough to be in multiple editions uh, but yet right. are still kind of that fantastical creature type i think there's there's definitely a lot of wiggle room depending mm-hmm. on what kind of creature uh you're looking at and where you're drawing inspiration from because you know, here we have a dragonborn with a tail and wings, which in right. fifth edition is not the way they look. But in fourth right. edition, they all had tails. And getting wings was something that you could get uh, outside of being a, a dragon sorcerer. So, mm-hmm. you know, there's there's a lot of a lot of that kind of wiggle room when it comes to those yeah. creatures. All right, very cool. Glad I asked. You're the first person to ask me that, so thank you. I hadn't You're even welcome. really I'd I'd thought about it a little bit, but not like um in depth like that. So mm-hmm. 
because I'd also gone into the movie very much trying to make sure I wasn't uh, rules lawyering things. Fair. Like, I yep. did not want to yep. be that fan. So Right. That's totally fair. Makes a lot and of I sense, think, really. Yeah, and I think the movie actually did an excellent job beyond that of not of, of sticking very, very close mm-hmm. to how the game actually works. Yeah. Uh, in in the vast majority of cases, and then in the stuff that they didn't, I thought made complete sense in the moment in the show in the movie. Um, were definitely things that like okay, this could never happen in the game, but it's rule of cool. Like, mm-hmm. even even the one bit in where I'm like, okay, I know how this spell actually works. And I know what they're doing that is not part of the spell. Right. And I'm okay with it because I know the payoff. Right. Yep. <laughs> I guessed one of the, the gags because of that. <laughs> but you know what? It was okay because it was still funny. Exactly. We've actually made some really good progress on Orkira today. I'm quite oh, yeah. happy with this. She's starting to take shape here. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Gonna... Oh, this is fun to see. This is fun this to see. This red is such together. a cool color. It really is. It's like lovely. And we're going to have some fun doing a little bit of highlighting um, with some orange. Again, mm-hmm. to play off what's being done in the skin art. Because you can see there's a little touch of orange going on in there. And then we'll work on doing the arms and feet and the shield for the next time we sit down with Okira and get the base done as well. So we still have some cool things to work on, but we're definitely well underway. I think we'll get this done within an episode. Yay. Yep. yep. Awesome. Oh. Uh, oh, sorry, you okay there? Yeah, I'm just looking. I, I finished up the sash. Can you show me your front really quick? Because I'm wondering. Okay, yeah, I did that correctly. Because yeah. you had said to avoid the belt. So Yes, we're going to do the belt. The belt doesn't take too long, but it was one of those things. I'm like, well... You can get the scarf done first and then do the belt since that's basically yeah. going to look like it's belted over the scarf. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So this is this is our Kira in process. Yeah. And she's getting there. Ancient oh, or Kira looking uh, a little more fearsome in mini form than in, yeah. in skin form. But hey, you know, <laughs> it's still a thing. It works. It's one of maybe the mini is uh, about to go rushing in to go heal someone mm-hmm. who's about to die. There you and- go. There you you go. know what? She's not smiling when she does that. That's Yo, a serious here moment. To the rescue. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. All right. So remember, folks, next week we're going to take a pause on our Kira and we're going to jump into doing a lovely little twig blessing uh, in Yay. honor of this little cutie pie who is going to be coming out next Wednesday. Twiggy the Twig Blessing, who is our next charity familiar. Uh, we worked with Johnny Staten, and that is for One Tree Planted. Again, First week of sales and proceeds are going to go to One Tree Planted. So if you want to add Twiggy to your roster of familiars for a good cause, starting Wednesday, it'll be the time to uh, take action and help out uh, for a wonderful group of uh, Earth-minded individuals. Uh, so we have that going on soon. Currently, we have Antrius, who has joined us from Deerstalker Pictures, One for All. Antrius. Uh, so Oh, Andreas. So we have another bard, people. There's another Yay! bard. <laughs> Deacon so is so happy right there. now. Oh, God. Jump in there for green grass. Unlock Andreas now. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. And Rory wants to come in and show her excitement, too. Yay for Andreas. Hi, Andreas. kitty. It's kind of appropriate, considering they have a cat who also shows up in their shows. <laughs> so, hey, that works. Absolutely. Um, yes. So we have Andreas going on. And then don't forget, Monday, tune in at 5 p.m. Pacific for the next episode of A Familiar Quest, again with Johanny Vargas' DM. Kelly, Brian, Megan, and Alicia playing their adorable familiars in their new forms. I uh, have lots of fun with that one. Uh, this is going to be episode three. We just got things started recently, so make sure you join us because not only do we have our usual crew joining us for this episode, we're also going to have... No, sadly, we won't have forgeling. No, as as have... awesome as they are, <laughs> the, sadly, <laughs> that, that would be amazing. But also, 
the oh, timing the time? would be oh, no, the I am d- poor not people. doing that. No, I am not doing that. <laughs> the poor people in Australia, I think that is some awful time in the morning. There for is them, a so. sweet spot of like two hours in the Pacific afternoon and the morning for the next day in Australia. And after that, it just gets to be either too late for us or way too early for them. Mm-hmm. Um, things you learn as you're coordinating. Um, but we will have back on track. We will have Johnny Staten joining the cast on Yay. Monday as Twiggy the Twig Blessing. It should be a lot of fun. So make sure you tune in and catch everyone up to their um, familiar antics and see where the adventure goes for that one. And then finally, don't forget it's the weekend. So we have our weekend buff going swift and agile weekend. And if you log in and get that going, and also make sure you sign up for a newsletter, you'll get the free swift gold chest with some lovely goodies inside for those of you who are part of the newsletter. Uh, I think, think that is everything. So oh, yeah. thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much, everyone, especially for uh, bearing with us for the earlier technical glitch. I, I hopefully we got that smoothed out as best as possible. Thank you to our moderator, who I'm not sure who it is because we're speaking it's from the past and now. Probably, probably Gabe. Gabe. It's probably okay. Gabe. Uh, Gabe, thank you. If it's not Gabe, Gabe, it's probably Jordan. If it's Jordan, Jordan. thank you. <laughs> and if it's anyone else, still thank you because, you know, still sometimes you. things happen. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and yeah and we'll see you next week and we're gonna have some fun and have a good weekend everyone and i think we will leave it at that so yeah bye bye Pick up your gear and open your chest. Throw on your armor and head out on a quest. Hey, hey, it's a brand new day. On the Sword Coast, your allies will help with blades and bows and magic as well. Hey, hey, heroes on their own.